Shalom. I want to start off by giving all glory and honor to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. And peace and salutations to the hopeful elect who are continuing to fight and teach this thing of ours in truth and sincerity. Honor Brother Manatazak with GMS Ancient of Days in Los Angeles, currently teaching with the small sanctuary in Inglewood. And today, through the Spirit, I want to get into a lesson of exhortation going into how we must continue to have unwavering hope okay now this lesson is inspired by the different trials tribulations and chastisements uh, us members of the hopeful elect go through on a daily basis okay not only do we have to deal with the pressures of this flesh but we also have to account for the spiritual fight that we also have to endure on a daily basis okay and, and the closer and closer we get towards this society collapsing here in Babylon the Great Okay, the close, the, the the more harder things are going to get for us. Okay, Yahweh Shimei Shai is going to continue to challenge us to trust and have faith in Him. Okay, and and sometimes the different things that we go through, okay, are are are, are not easy to handle. But we have to remember that Yahweh Shimei Shai is not going to put more on us than what our spirit can bear. So if you're going through a certain situation, then 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 have the knowledge in the spirit to know. That you're going through it for a reason okay either it's a, a a penitence for something you did in the past okay or it's a challenge that the Lord knows that you can you can surpass as long as you keep continue to keep the faith okay there's stumbling blocks false prophets okay uh, disenchantments all around us on a daily basis okay when I say us I'm speaking primarily to you so-called Negroes, so-called Hispanics, and so-called Native Americans. We are the true children of Israel, according to the scriptures. So the law, statutes, and commandments of the Bible were given to our people to follow. And we are in this state that we're in now, this state of destitution, this state of being stagnant, okay, this state of being under the, uh, 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 the, the boots of our enemy, right? Under the curses. Because we broke the law, statutes, and commandments, Okay. But because of our, our um, <clears throat> but because of our diligence, you know, not, or not diligence, but uh, our, our uh, because of the uh, for the sake of prophecy, so to speak. Okay, we we can move in confidence at knowing that this is our last captivity. Okay, and only those that continue forward in diligence, okay, will be saved. Because as the scriptures say, he that endureth until the end, the same shall be saved. And Lord willing, that's us doing this work in truth and sincerity. Now, without further ado, I want to get the definition of hope, okay? And, and we're going to go into how that also ties into our faith. But the definition of hope is a feeling of expectation and a desire for a certain thing to happen. Okay, I'm going to read that again. This is the definition of hope, okay? A feeling of expectation and a desire for a certain thing to happen. But what is our expectation? Okay, our expectation is to, is to be free from this state of captivity. Our expectation is to be perfect and once again live in the sight of the Heavenly Father. Our expectation is to have these heathen nations once again under us as we rule in righteousness. Okay, our expectation, Lord willing, is for deliverance. Is that not the expected end that Yahweh Shemashai deems for his people? For it is written in the scriptures. Okay. This is not the end-all be-all for our people to be under these heathen nations, okay? And that's a comforting thought in of itself now that we've woken up to the truth and who we really are according to the scriptures, okay? Now, I want to get Hebrews 11, and the whole chapter uh, 11 in Hebrews is going into faith being exemplified and the different examples of our forefathers of how they showed faith and how the Lord rewarded them because of that. So how much more so here in these last days as we are entering a time like never before? Okay. This is Hebrews 11 and 1. It says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Okay. The evidence of things not seen. We could preach all day and long about our deliverance and our salvation, which is soon to come. Okay. About how yeah, our, our Lord and Savior, how Shai is going to crack the clouds during this second coming bring destruction to Babylon the Great and deliver his elect. It sounds like, you know, a, a scene from a sci-fi movie or something, you know? 
But this is what's written in the scriptures and this is what's prophesied to happen. And the hopeful elect believe this and we put our unwavering hope in this. Okay? The words that are written herein are faithful and true. Okay? And the members of the hopeful elect believe this. We are putting all of our eggs, so to speak, in one basket that the words written herein are true. Okay, and there's going to be a lot of people, even of the Israelites, that are, to, that are going to be confounded in these last days. Okay, because the things that we teach and preach are, are, are so unheard of and so fantastical to the ear that, that they don't believe what's written. There, there's a lot of Israelites that, that deem this as a fairy tale, not realizing that, you know, these great stories of our forefathers are true and they actually happen. This is a written account. Okay. Uh, let's get uh, Proverbs 13 and 12. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 13, verse 12. It says, Hope deferred maketh the heart sick, but when the desire cometh, it is a tree of life. Okay, and this is, this is very heavy and something to consider in these last days. Okay, now when you go into uh, hope being deferred, that, that that's basically a phrase that can be interpreted a few different ways. And, and I wrote down some of the different meanings that were under the definition of hope being deferred. Okay, one example is hope is crushed. Okay, when hope is crushed, it can make someone sick. Right, and that, that's, that's basically a... a uh, a, uh, a synonym of, of the scripture that we just read hope being deferred okay another word for that is hope being crushed let's read that Proverbs 13 and 12 again it says hope deferred maketh the heart sick but when the desire cometh it is a tree of life okay so that's how important it is to have hope and how devastating it could be when someone's hope is deferred okay that's why we must continue to have faith in the promises made by Yahweh Shai to his people, right? Okay, another uh, uh, definition of hope deferred is hope is delayed, right? It says the longer someone goes without seeing their hope realized, the more likely they are, they are to become discouraged. Okay, that's why we must maintain the faith and continue to trust and believe the words that are written therein. Okay, don't doesn't the scripture say that in our patience we possess our, possess our faith? Well, patience goes back to suffering, okay? It may seem like the things that are written therein to happen and take place are tearing, but the Lord is actually making moves on a grand scale each and every day, okay? So, so, so prophecy is definitely happening. That's why we as the watchmen have to continue to keep our eyes peeled spiritually so that we can report on these things and get the hopeful elect ready and aware of what's coming down the pipeline so they aren't caught unawares. Because when Yahweh Shai does return, the scriptures detail him coming as a thief in the night. Okay, but he's coming as a thief in the night only to those that aren't keeping watch and looking out for the signs of his coming. All right. <clears throat> Continuing on, definition of uh, hope deferred. It says hope is false. Right. If if hope is something that will never happen, it is a false hope. Okay. If hope is something that will never happen, it is a false hope. But we know that our hope is faithful and true. Okay? And we know that because it is written in the book. All right? That's why we have complete faith in it. All the prophets that came beforehand, Old Testament, the Apocrypha, New Testament, they all spoke the same thing and believed the same thing. So we're coming back in our same lot, reading these same scriptures, precept upon precept, Line upon line, here a little, there a little. Only now we have the complete understanding. So we should move in complete confidence because the days we're living in now are the days that the prophets seen in their visions. Okay, the days that they wish that they could see with their own eyes, and they have, and they are, because they're back in their same lots. All right. It says, uh, and here's the last one. It says, hope is vulnerable. It says, when someone faces disappointment, they are vulnerable. But we have nothing to be disappointed in or ashamed, okay? We realize that we're going through these different chastisements as a punishment, but also to be built up and purged of our evil ways, okay? 
it may seem like a cruel tutelage, but it's a necessary one. Okay, because as a, a elder high priest Yaqua once famously said, in order to become gods, you have to know both good and evil. And the only way for us to learn evil was to leave our first estate in imperfection and come down and experience sin in its totality in this sinful flesh. Okay, the best teacher is experience. Okay. And as I said before, pursuing the prophecy, this is our last captivity. So that, that punishment, that lesson is almost up. After this, we are going to be made perfect and we're going to rule in righteousness. Okay, having understood both good and evil in its, its totality. Okay, it's a, it's a beautiful lesson. Okay, but, but it's hard while you're going through it, but we understand the necessity of it. Okay. Uh, let's see, let's get a Jeremiah... 17 Jeremiah 17 verses 7 and 8 which reads blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord Yahweh Shemashai and whose hope the Lord Yahweh Shemashai is for he shall be as a tree planted by the waters and that spreadeth out her roots by the river and shall not see the heat cometh but her leaf shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from, from yielding fruit. So as long as we keep our trust and our faith in Yehovah Shemei Al-Shai, we'll be like a tree that doesn't need to uh, uh, worry about withering in the sun or, or worry about uh, not being nourished or worry about a drought and not bearing fruit. Okay? The scriptures say, out of our belly shall flow rivers of living water. As long as we stay rooted and trusted, trust in Yehovah Shemei Al-Shai, grounded in this truth, Okay, and have confidence in the things that we have learned, we are going to be taken care of. And as I stated before, oftentimes when you're going through those different trials and tribulations, it's not easy, but best believe it's, it's for a purpose, it's for a reason. The Lord is trying to purge us and purify us. So the best thing to do when you're going through those challenges is to pray for more strength, pray for more faith, pray for more endurance, pray that the Lord keeps the spirit on you fast if you need to okay exhort yourself to studying reading okay or even congregating with the brotherhood right these they're, 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 they're different things that Yahweh Hashem Hashai put in place for us to, to, to help us maintain in this captivity and in this affliction okay uh, let's see let's get Hebrews 2 and 3 Another excellent scripture, especially during the times that we're in now. Hebrews 2 and 3, which reads. Wait, is it Hebrews 2? Let's see, yeah. Where do I want to start? No, actually, you know, no, no, no. It's Habakkuk. Habakkuk 2 and 3. Salakia. I said Hebrews 2 and 3. We're actually going to Habakkuk. Uh, Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 3. Let's see. Which reads. Actually, we'll begin at verse 2. It says, And the Lord, Yehobah Shemashai, answered me, and answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables. Write the vision. Write the prophecy. Okay? The prophecy that we see. Right? And make it plain upon tables. Right? These scriptures. Okay, write it down and make it plain to be understood. You know, as if you had a table uh, uh, laid out before a person, they have different items with the prices on it. It's plain to see. Write the vision and make it plain upon tables, right? It says that he may run that readeth it. So the person that reads it, they'll be, be able to understand it, take what they've learned, and go out and pay it forward, go out and teach it, so on and so forth. That's the lot of the prophets until that final member of the elect is sealed. Okay, verse three it says, "For the vision is yet for an appointed time; for the prophecy that we that we see is yet for an appointed time." Right? It says, "But at the end it shall speak and not lie." So that appointed time is surely coming, and before you know it, it's going to come to pass, and it's going to be, remain true to to what was originally shown us, what was originally understood, and we are living in those times now. Okay. It says, though it tarry, wait for it. So though it seems to be like it's prolonging, continue to wait. Right? Continue to be patient. 
continue to, to, to suffer, right? And wait for it. It says, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Because it will surely come, it will not continue to be prolonged. And every day that, 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 that comes to pass is one day closer, okay? And that's the faith that we have. And let's get Jeremiah 29 and 11. I quoted it earlier, but this is a perfect time to bring it out through the Spirit. Jeremiah 29, verse 11, which reads, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, Yahweh Hashem Hashai, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. So although we're going through uh, uh, these different uh, captivities, and, and, and these different afflictions in both the in, in the flesh and in the mind and the spirit. At the end of the day, Yahweh Shemashai has love for his people. At the end of the day, the one true living power, okay, thinks thoughts thoughts of peace towards us. Okay? Not of evil. And evil means bad times. So so those bad times are eventually gonna come to an end. Okay? And and the great news is when they do come to an end, they're never going to return for our people. We're going to uh, live a life of uh, luxury and, and, and righteous eternity. Okay? And that's what's written for the Israelites. Okay? It says to give you an expected end. That expected end is rulership over these nations. Okay? And, and ruling this earth in righteousness as it was meant to be from the beginning. That's the expected end of the Israelites. And we look forward to it and we hasten that, hasten that day. Okay, let's get Micah 7-7. Seven, seven. Another precept. Uh, let's see. Where are we at? No, that's Daniel. Let's get uh, yeah, Micah chapter 7, verse 7. It says, Therefore I will look unto the Lord, Yahweh by Shimei Shai. Okay, it says, I will wait for the power of my salvation. My power will hear me. Okay. So we're going to look to you, Yahweh Shemel Shai, for, for all of our, our troubles. We're going to pray to him, okay, and, and beg him for forgiveness. Beg him for strength and more faith and more clarity in these last days, right? Because he's the power of our salvation, okay? He, we already read what the, our, the expected end was for his people, okay? Though it tarry, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not tarry. Yahweh Shai is on his way. Okay, it says my power will hear me, and when you go into Micah the seventh chapter, it goes into the the people confessing their sins, which is what we're doing on a daily when we examine ourselves, okay, and we're repenting to the Most High for all of our different faults and mishaps, because we're not perfect, we're nowhere near perfect, and we recognize that the members of the hopeful elect are going to come to Yahweh Shimon Shai with truth and sincerity and all supplication. We need help. We need a deliverer. We need a savior. We long for one because it vexes us to continually go off and to do things that are against the, the will of the Heavenly Father, ultimately. All right. Now we're going to finish it up in Romans. We've got a couple of precepts. Uh, Romans 5, beginning of verse 3, is our first one. And it reads, let's see. Actually, we'll begin at the top. And this is going into having peace with the Most High. Romans 5 at the top. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with the Most High through our Lord, Yahweh Shai Mashiach, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of the Most High. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not a shame, because the love of the Most High is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, which is given unto us. Okay? And that's a beautiful promise. That is a beautiful promise. And this proves that the Yahweh Shema is expected in for his people is, the, is, original, is a, uh, ultimately to, 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 to live into their purpose. Okay? But there's, a, there's a, a, a process that has to take place first. Prophecy has to take place first. And we have to finish this punishment out. Okay, that's why we move in confidence because we know how close we really are. We still have to go through Jacob's trouble, but the Lord said that, that uh, uh, He's going to take care of us in that day as long as we keep the faith. 
Okay, all the examples that we need are written therein. And you have the prophets breaking it down and showing you the way to go. Beginning with the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. All right. Uh, let's get our Romans 8, beginning at verse 24. It says, For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? Okay? And that, that's one of the uh, the mysteries of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. But, the, but the, the truth of the matter is, because it is written, we have seen it. Okay? That's what a, uh, uh, a, prof a prophet, prophet is. A prophet is someone that, that sees something before it happens. But we're reading out of the scriptures. And true indeed, we, we receive visions and we receive prophecies of things that were to take place. That's why we have tr uh, uh, faith in what's written because we know it's going to happen. Okay? I'm going to read it again. Romans 8 and 24. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? Remember, Hebrews 11 and 1, right? Faith is uh, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, right? We are going to be greatly blessed because we believe and have not seen, okay? And when I say we, I say that humbly speaking. Verse 25, but if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it? It says, likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And that's a beautiful thought in of itself, knowing that, Lord willing, if we go back to those righteous spirits, our spirits are crying out with words that we can't even utter or understand. Okay? And the Lord, the angels and the Lord hear, hear, hear those prayers and those supplications. Okay, and that, that's a beautiful thought. That's a comforting thought. And let's end it in uh, Romans 12 and 12. Okay, and uh, Romans the 12th chapter details dedicating your lives to the Most High. Okay, it says rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. Okay, and that, that is some very sound advice for these last days. Something that we should all uh, examine ourselves and live into. Romans 12 and 12 again, it says, Rejoicing in hope. We're rejoicing in the hope of our expected end. Okay, and we have unwavering hope and unwavering faith that if we continue in the course of action that we've been given, okay, that we're going to be delivered when it's all said and done. Okay, it says patience in tribulation. Okay, we're not going to lose faith or lose focus when we go through our different chastisements. We're going to be patient and continue to suffer through the tribulation There's knowing that there's a balance at the end of it, okay? We, we catch tribulation for a time, and then the Lord eases up. Then we catch tribulation for a time, and the Lord eases up. We are being tempered, okay, like, like, like metal in a fire. We are being purified, and this is part of that purification process. It says continuing instant in prayer. I'm going to show you how powerful prayer is. And with Yahweh Shai being a mediator to the Heavenly Father, He hears our prayers. And he's relaying them to the Heavenly Father, just as the angels are bringing up our prayers as a, as a sweet savor to the Heavenly Father. Prayer is very important, especially in these last days. Okay? So, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying to the hopeful elect. I want to give all glory and honor to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. And peace and salutations to the hopeful elect who are continuing to fight and teach this thing of ours in truth and sincerity. Once again, this has been your brother Manatazak. Until the next lesson, Shalom.